Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day. So if you're looking for some reading inspiration, you just like following book reviews, then feel free to stick around. Now let's talk about today's book. Today I'm going to be reviewing a viewer recommendation. This was something that was left in a comment underneath one of my videos, so I got it from another library, I checked it out, and I read it. So the book today is Surreal Numbers by D.E. Um, I don't know if it's Knuth or Knuth, probably not Knuth, um, D-E-K-N-U-T-H. So the book is kind of thin, but I want to say right off the bat, do not let the size of this book fool you because this book is very mentally and intellectually challenging and I really really enjoyed it. So let's talk about surreal numbers. This book was written in the 1970s, something that you're going to find immediately obvious by the use of the phrase far out, something that I uh, think very clearly identifies the 70s as a time. And this book is written in a dialogue format. So the format is a discussion between two individuals labeled A and B. A is Alice, B is Bill. These are two individuals who have decided that they do not want to participate in civilization and they've run off to like an island or a coastline and they're just going to live the good life, eating food and staying on the beach. It's also kind of implied these two people are in love with one another. Bill and Alice though are just hanging out, living the good life, separate from civilization, and one day they discover a stone in the water or in some sand and it's it has some inscribed um, in in carvings and engravings, that's the word I'm looking for on it. And these engravings have the basics of mathematics. They call it the Conway Stone. Conway is the person who's writing this stone and it's clearly a reference to the mathematician John Conway. And the stone kind of gives some basic rules. It doesn't give the kind of rules that you would think it gives. Let me see if I can just find and read the section. In the beginning, everything was void, and J.H.W.H. Conway began to create numbers. Conway said, let there be two rules which bring forth all numbers, large and small. This shall be the first rule. Every number corresponds to two sets of previously created numbers, such that no number on the left set is greater than or equal to any, num any member of the right set. And it continues such like that. So as you can see, it's not really rules like the kind of thing you would find in a math book, and it's written in this it's written in the style of Genesis from the Bible. So with all this in mind, Bill and Alice, who have nothing better to do, decide they want to decipher the Conway Stone. They want to figure out what these rules are and they want to figure out what they can build from these rules. Kind of an intellectual challenge to keep them occupied while they're on this island coast, enjoying life, living the good life. So they start to go about deciphering this. And basically this dialogue is two people in this fictionalized setting building the rules of mathematics up from the very beginning, from the basics. And I'm not talking about maybe like, we're gonna memorize addition, we're gonna memorize subtraction, we're gonna memorize multiplication. And the way this is taught in a lot of schools is kind of rote memorization. You just memorize that seven times seven equals 49. You just memorize that. You don't think about why that works. You just memorize it. Maybe there's some basic explanation involved. I was told as a kid that multiplication was repeat addition and division was repeat subtraction, but what's addition and subtraction? What's a number? What makes a number equal to another number? What makes a number greater than another number? What makes a number less than another number? There's all of these things that we're presented with in mathematics and we kind of just accept as truth and it's kind of used because we need to keep the subject moving along in school. But the author of this book, and I kind of agree with them, says that we don't really get into the interesting parts of mathematics really until a student goes off to their graduate studies or until they pursue mathematics in college. That's where a student gets to pursue the interesting aspects of math. But by the time a student gets to that level of mathematics, you've already lost everything or everyone but the most dedicated of students. You've lost everyone who maybe actually be very interested in mathematics, but because it's taught as this rote chore with no explanation, no creativity, no thinking involved, then a lot of people who maybe would be interested in mathematics kind of fall out. So Bill and Alice are left with this challenge of kind of, without knowing it, they really are building the basics of mathematics, the field that we know today, from the beginning. So like I mentioned, what makes a number equal to another number? What makes a number greater than another number? What is addition? What is subtraction? How can you say, well, what happens when you add two numbers together? Um, what is a number in the first place? How can you prove what a number is? All these things they kind of have to work out and they do so over the course of, it's like 115 or so pages. So not very long 
but plenty of stuff built in. I already mentioned do not underestimate the size of this book as it being light. I frequently found myself having to go back and read sections again and again, and I want to say that there is quite a bit of notation in this, so they are kind of assuming or they're assuming you're going to be comfortable with looking at mathematical notation. And I'm going to discuss that later when I talk about who I think or who I think should be the audience of this book. So there really is quite a lot of actual mathematics with the dialogue. And the dialogue isn't just we do this x, we do this x. It is really kind of a conversation or perceived to be a kind of not really natural, but more natural conversation, say a textbook, where the two individuals, Bill and Alice have false starts, they have conclusions that are then wrong, they start something and say, Oh, wait, this is wrong, we need to go back. So it really feels like it's not just a textbook laying out the facts, but it is the process of discovery with these two individuals. It seems small, as I mentioned, the book seems small, the topic, the basics of mathematics seems very trivial, but it really is incredibly interesting. And I really enjoyed reading this book. I think I had one of the best times I've had reading a book on mathematics in a while reading this book because even though it was such basic things at one point they talk about proving one plus one and that's something that's so basic I don't even remember learning it not the proof the actual solution to that but why does that work and having it put out in some sort of proof format was really interesting and just mentally stimulating so I don't want anyone to go into this thinking it's going to be a quick read. I had to read this over the course of several days because I really wanted to sit down and kind of chew on what was going on in the book to figure out what was going on. Now let's talk about who I think this book is aimed for and some thoughts on the book. As I already mentioned, I really enjoyed this book, but I might not be the average person. I have completed my college degree. I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics. So some things aren't going to scare me as much. For example, pages of mathematical notation isn't going to be terrifying for me to look at. I don't have a fear of mathematics. I'm not mathematically gifted, I would say, but I don't have a fear that I think a lot of people have of math. A lot of people, as I mentioned, just did this as a chore, as a task they needed to get through in high school. Maybe they thought it was okay, but they haven't really touched it since high school. This is what I'm going to refer to as like the lay person, someone who either hates math, all the way up people who really haven't touched it since high school, just have the basics they need to get through their day-to-day -day life. The, the books that I review regarding math on my channel tend to be geared towards people who are more in that lay person category, tend to be books that are written for the popular audience, written for people who haven't really touched these topics since high school. However, the author of this book notes in the back, which I think the back is kind of an interesting supplement. There's additional questions if you want to think, think on additional yeah, challenges. And he also talks about how he thinks this book should be used. It's in this postscript section here. But he says that he thinks this book is, or he intends this book to be someone who is at, who is in a college mathematics course. I don't think that should deter people who aren't taking college mathematics or who really haven't taken a college mathematics course from reading this book, but the author does intend it for an audience that's a little bit more comfortable with mathematics, and he isn't writing this for the layperson who maybe hasn't really thought of anything since they took an algebra course partway through their high school career and then closed the chapter on their math education. Again, I don't think that precludes you from reading this book, I just think the author isn't writing with you in mind. This book to me feels very, very similar to a book I read in late February, early March of this year, and that is The Big Bang of Numbers by Manal Suri. This book was again the building of mathematics from the beginning on up, and it covers a lot of the same topics, but The Big Bang of Numbers, which the review for is on my channel, starts with a more basic understanding or assumption of your mathematics level. I do think that if you, if this sounds interesting, but you're not sure you have the math skills to enjoy or appreciate surreal numbers, I would recommend actually starting with the big bang of numbers. It's actually so similar that I wonder if I would go back and get that book from the library. It made any reference or mentioned being inspired by this book because this book just feels very similar um, to the big bang of numbers. The big bang of numbers though assumes that they're starting with people with less math familiarity, also assuming that they're starting with people who maybe aren't as comfortable manipulating math symbols or reasoning their way through proof. So it starts with a little bit lower assumption of skill level, but still covers a lot of the same topics. Now that book is a little bit longer, but because it's written to a, um, to a it's assuming that the skill level, the mathematics skill level of the audience is a little lower. I found the Big Bang of Numbers reads quicker. Well, this book, The Surreal Numbers, is shorter, 
but requires a little bit more mental exer exertion, at least on my part, to read this. There was a um, classmate of mine in college who said the shorter the math textbook for a class, the more scared he was of the class, and I did find that to be true. The harder the class, the thinner the book would be. Your massive calculus textbook, that didn't scare me. It was when the books were thin where I started to get a little worried, and I feel like that stands true. The Big Bang of Numbers is like this big, kind of a fun, poppy math book. Surreal Numbers is pretty thin and definitely an intellectual challenge. Um, Again, don't let anything I say dissuade you from reading this. Definitely give it a try, but if you find this to be too difficult or it's a, moving a little bit too fast for your taste, you need to review some stuff. Maybe read The Big Bang of Numbers by Mano Suri and then come back to Surreal Numbers by D.E. We're going to call him Nuth. I really hope I'm saying that correctly. I also wanted to point out at the back of this book, the author mentions um, John, um, John Conway of Cambridge University, so the person who the Conway Stone is named after, who is a very famous mathematician. I just found out he actually died recently in 2020, which I am sorry to hear about. But the author mentions some little game that he invented, and I really wonder if the game that he's referencing in passing in this section on Conway in the back is his very famous game of life that he's known for inventing. I'm just curious about that and wonder if that was what the author was referencing. I would give this a four out of five star. This is again one of the best books on mathematics that I've read in a while. I really enjoyed it. I would love to pick up a copy of this book for myself because I feel like it's the kind of thing I could go back to and read every couple months just for the intellectual challenge. I found it very very enjoyable and I think a lot of other people will find it very enjoyable. So for the person who recommended this book to me, thank you. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time reading it. Thank you for the recommendation. If anyone else has any recommendations, if you have any books that you think I should read, whether they're related to math or not, I don't just read books on math, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you've read Surreal Numbers and have any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear that too. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest.